Hey everybody, welcome back. Part three now, finally, in our intro to uh, test-driven development in Apex. We're going to wrap up uh, what I'm going to call kind of the, the most basic TDD scenarios. And in Apex and Salesforce, I really mean because we're not dealing with any SOQL. We're not dealing with any DML, right? We are just doing the most basic kind of before insert, before update, context, no related records, nothing like that. And we'll finish that up. We'll talk a little bit about what unit tests are and what integration tests are. And again, please, uh, you know, hit me up on LinkedIn. Happy to chat. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm right, think I'm wrong. I'm really, uh, feedback is great, very helpful to me. So let's, uh, all right, enough said. Let's uh, get, what did I just do there? Huh? Got all kinds of weird stuff open. Anyway, uh, <laughs> hit a key I wasn't expecting on uh, my Windows 11 update. Let's get on over into our FizzBuzz, right? So let's run our tests just to make sure everything is still working, right? Where we left off. Verify our system is functioning. All right, and I ran all our tests today uh, because we are going to start you know, using some of the trigger handlers and things. So, boom, 22 pa tests passed, uh, and we are good. You see, less than even one second runtime. Very nice. All right, so when we left off in part two, we did our last test. Uh, we tested if a record got updated correctly to fizz, if the value was evenly divisible by three. So what we need to do today, we need to check uh, fit pardon me, buzz, fizz buzz, and then we need to actually write some integration tests to make sure that what we, so we are testing each individual part of our code now with unit tests, but we still need to at some point actually make sure that what we think happens when we hit the database actually happens, right? So what we need to do first is I think we need to test for is fizz buzz. So I'm going to copy this test because they're going to be mostly the same. All right, and ba -ba -ba boom, and I'm going to is fizz buzz. Okay, and we are gonna change that to. I think we want to make that probably have my microphone right up on my keyboard. So that's probably was banging a little bit. So I would just push that back a little bit. We're gonna change that to a 15. All right, that should give us a both divides by three and five evenly. Right, and same thing, right? We're just gonna, we're gonna instantiate a list. We're gonna pass that value into our list constructor. And then we are going to instantiate our fizzbuzz class. Then when we call dot run, um, we expect to get that, that the, that our record, our list, right? Records to process, because it only has one value at the zeroth index that that value is actually going to be fizz buzz. All right. All right, so now let's deploy that. DX push, give it a second. A little slow today. It's one of the joys of, one of the joys of Salesforce, right? Uh, okay, boom, that's deployed. Now, so if we run our tests, Alt four and five, that one should fail. Test failed one. That is what we wanted. Okay, good. Right, that's that is TDD red green refactor. Right. So now let's write just enough code to make that sucker pass. Okay. Um, so really, I'm going to tell you what we actually need to do here is I'm going to drop down. First of all, I'm going to refactor this one to is fizz buzz. And then we are going to, so then is fizz should actually fail. And we're going to refactor and change that to is, is, uh, is fizz. The reason why, and here's kind of like the whole secret or like the, I call it a secret. I mean, it's not like a really hard thing to do. But fizzbuzz is you need to check the fizzbuzz condition first. Uh, you need to check first if that integer value is divisible by three and five evenly. Uh, otherwise, you'll get the wrong value back because 15, right? If you're checking the fizz condition first, it's going to evaluate to fizz uh, and you're going to update that. So this is the fastest, most efficient way to do it is you check the fizzbuzz condition first. Is fizzbuzz, fizzbuzz, value for analysis underscore C. Result equals fizz buzz. 
And another thing, if you want to refactor this later on for practice, uh, for production code is, you know, like I would change these from these little magic strings down here to constants probably. And let's um, DX push. Let's deploy that. I feel like I should edit this stuff out where I'm just sitting around awkwardly waiting for uh, things to deploy to a scratch org. All right. Now let's go back to run our tests again, right? Now, if I did this right, is FizzBuzz should actually pass now and Fizz should fail, right? So what do we have? What failed? Is Fizz. All right. So, and if we go, right, if we go down to our stack trace, the assertion failed. Exactly. And I'm telling you, if a test without an assertion is not, and that's why we write tests to make sure our code works. So, let's go back. And now, we are going to, if is fizz, and results. All right, and we're gonna do um, we're gonna check is fizz for analysis C. I want to do fizz B dot result C equals fizz. And I got a little red squiggly there, I see. Extra semicolon, because I did not cast that to an integer value. All right, now, let's redeploy. And now all our tests should pass. Deployed. All right. Everything passed. Awesome. All right. Let's hop right back in. Or what did we need to test for one more thing? So cool. All right. And so we need to check for is buzz right? And once again, because these tests are awfully similar, I'm going to just copy and paste that sucker down here. I'm going to go up and, whoa, where am I going? Huh? Is buzz. All right. And we're going to make this a value of five. Everything else is the same, except we're going to change our assertion. Deployed. Once again, we should be, you know, that red, you see that red green factor page test failed. All right. And our one failure is buzz. Now let's write, let's make a pass. Let's make it pass. And I, for own personal preferences here, am not going to make this an else condition uh, because, right, I mean, we could have an even number, right? So we're just going to, which would also be a way we could optimize this if you wanted to refactor. Else is, is integer. Equal buzz. And you know what? I'm gonna. You know what? I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna do an else right now because I don't want to test for that right now. Uh, don't write production code that we haven't written a test for.
Got it. Sometimes with trick with TDD is it's, it's hard. Got to be disciplined sometimes. Even I, I mean, I really, I work hard at this, but uh, once in a while I still kind of run away and it's, you have to catch yourself. Oh, I'm writing, I'm writing code that I haven't written tests for yet. Um, push. All right, everything should pass. Let's find out. Let's run all our tests. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so that is beautiful, right? 24 green check marks. Boom. And it's fast. And we know our system works. So here's what we have done so far. This is, I think you're going to see a lot of definitions of unit test versus integration test out there. And so certainly, I mean, Wikipedia, Google it. Here's kind of how I look. So truly, I'm going to say, I feel like if I was a purist, I would say even these aren't truly unit tests. Um, because I am instantiating the clash, right? I'm not just testing that method in isolation. I am setting up something else. I am setting up a, a, a class with a constructor to then test that run method. Um, so I think some people would technically say these are integration tests at this level. Um, I guess to me, I feel like it, for something like this, it's a, I'm going to say a distinction without a difference. And in Salesforce, when I talk about I'm when I say on, on a project I'm on or my team, hey, we need to write integration tests. Those are the tests where we're really hitting the database, right? We now we have we know all our code works. Everything that we've done every step of the way works. But we still actually need to verify that when a user creates a FizzBuzz record, puts a value of three into the results for analysis field, that that hits the database, triggers fire, and that gets persisted in the Salesforce database with a value of Fizz, right? For three. So that's what we got to check for. So let's write an integration test. Um, and I think in the interest of brevity for this video, I'm probably only going to write one and feel free to take hop in and do the rest for homework. But I'm going to try to keep this a pretty short video today. Then we'll hop over and we'll actually do one from the UI. It's like our final uh, sanity check, right? So I'm going to say at is test. Static void. Um, is fizz, I'm going to call it is fizz integration. All right. And then I'm going to say fizzbuzz c fizzbuzz equals new fizzbuzz c value for analysis c equals three. You know, just because I like to do this, I'm going to do my given. So this is how I, if you, I think I've made it, but this is how I like to organize my test, right? By given, when, then. So this is the condition that's set up, right? We have a FizzBuzz record, and it has a value for analysis three. When. Whoop. All right. How about I put comments in front of that, right? <laughs> just a when out there in isolation. When. I'm going to say insert. And you know, but I got to insert FizzBuzz. We're going to insert that record. So that's something we have not done at any point in this test so far is DML. Oh, because it's giving me a little, I was like, what? That's so it's a yellow squiggly, but it's PMD because I don't have an assertion yet. Then, so now let's query the database and get this sucker back. Okay. I'm going to say fizzbuzz c equal, oh, we name, we got to name that, updated. What? Updated, updated fizzbuzz equals. From is buzz C. I'm going to say, I mean, there should only be one in the database, but just something I always throw on there to make me feel better about myself. All right. Then, so we have, we've got, we should have an updated record from the database. So now let's write our assertion. All right. 
updated fizzbuzz dot results c is equal to I have, I tell you what, I need to clean my keyboard. I don't know what's up with these runaway <laughs> uh, values yet. That's a double equals, right? Because we are checking for equality. We're not assigning anything. Um, and that's value should, it should equal three, right? All right. Now, let's deploy that sucker. So we're not touching any of our production code at this, but we've already written all the tests for our production code. This is kind of our last sanity check, all right? All right, now, oh, look at that, is Fizz integration test. No, we're in our trigger handler tests. And Fizz buzz tests, we wanna show those, All right? And is Fizz integration passed? So I'm saying, I feel like you've, if you have stuck with me for three videos, you've watched me watch write a lot of tests. So feel free to hop in, pull this from GitHub, write these last couple. But this is fundamentally, I'm going to talk about to me, this is the difference between a unit test and an integration test. Now we're hitting the data layer. And here is the benefit to this is, okay, so everything else verified that the code worked, right? Like, my mental model of how to solve this problem was correct and we tested it every step of the way um so typically now if all of a sudden i get a user report hey there's a there's a bug in the fizzbuzz app i'm gonna go run first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna go run my fizzbuzz tests okay and if all of my unit tests pass but my integration tests fail generally um i'm gonna say typically what is usually either a data issue or I'm going to say, you know, nine times out of 10, it's something that happened on the declarative side. Somebody added a validation rule, right? There is now a, a flow that is running in a different part of the execution context and updating this after everything else runs and changing it to fizzbuzzaroo or something, right? So if all of my unit tests are passing, but my integration tests are not, it really helps me know, hey, you know, so the problem is probably not anywhere in the actual code. It's most likely a, it's most likely a data or I'm going to say a metadata issue, right? Something with something with a declare with a with a process builder, a flow, a validation rule, something like that. And you know what? Just last, just to be cool, let's um, let's uh, I want to test this from the UI. All right, and uh, recently viewed Fizz. So I see I even made a little app here, right? <laughs> Got a little FizzBuzz app. Why are you so slow? FizzBuzz 6000, right? Because this is this is sophisticated stuff. So we're going to create a new FizzBuzz. And right, so here's all the marbles. Let's, let's give it a three. Save. Oh, look at that result. Let's do another one, right? I mean, that was cool. How cool! Every time stuff works, I'm always like, "That was pretty cool." Let's give it a let's give it a five. Oh my goodness, two in a row, and we're gonna do one more new fizz buzz. Fifteen, whoop, fifteen, not one fifteen. I wonder what that would come out to though. I don't know. Fizz buzz. All right, so everything actually works. Honest, go. and we can see how it works, not just with the code, but hey, this actually works with our with our database, with our S objects. So again, hope that if this was helpful, please let me know. Love to hear from people either in the comments or LinkedIn. Um, I really do. I love the feedback. Um, hit like, hit subscribe if you want, so you'll get notifications when there's something new. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to stay on a little more regular schedule this year. And that is it for Introduction to Test Driven Development in Apex. Hope this helps. Uh, go back, talk to your team, talk to your boss. Say, hey, you know what? I think we need to start, you know, a, uh, start following a more TDD uh, development style on our projects. It is the single thing that I have done as a programmer that I believe has radically improved the quality of the code and my own workflow. So I'll see you soon and take care, everybody.